Hello friends, Jermaine here and welcome to this video. I did a series about a year ago exploring how we can talk to a MongoDB database from Dart. And in this video, what we're going to be doing is we'll be exploring how we can talk to a PostgreSQL database from Dart. And the way we'll do that is by using a package called Postgres, which was developed by the same team behind the Aqueduct framework. So let's begin. I've got a project set up using Stagehand. So it's a console simple application and it's got the relevant dependencies we need to start us off. So in our pubspec.yaml, for instance, we've got our Postgres package installed. We have a Docker compose file with instructions to bootstrap a Postgres database. So you don't need to go out there and install Postgres, the actual Postgres package itself. Now you don't need to set all of these up yourselves because I've made it available on GitHub over here. So if you go to this URL and you check out the starter branch, you should have the relevant setup to follow with me in the tutorial. If we look at this Docker file briefly, I've configured port 5435 on this machine to point to the actual Postgres port running in the Docker container. And here as well, I've set port 8082 to point to 8080 in the container. Now this was copied from the Postgres page on Docker Hub, and I've just adjusted the ports here and Postgres password would be password. Now to run this Docker file, if you open your terminal and you do docker compose up hyphen D, it'll just run it in the background. Now I've already done that, so I'm not gonna run it here. Once you do that, then you should have your Postgres server set up and ready to go. And also you've got this UI that allows you to connect to your Postgres database. And also make sure that you've updated your packages by running the pubget command, which will go off and install the Postgres package. And that being said, I'm gonna draw our attention to this file. I may not dart file. Let's start by importing the Postgres package. And then in our main function, we'll get rid of all of that. Start by attempting to connect to our database. So I'll create a variable called con for connection. And we want to instantiate a Postgres SQL connection. And this constructor accepts a couple of parameters. So the first parameter is the host which is localhost. And next we need to configure our port, which was set to 5435. Then that's followed by the name of our database, which we'll call dart test. And then we need to define the username and password, which are named parameters. So the username is the default for all Postgres databases, which is Postgres. And the password, if you look in the Docker file, we just set it to password. Then I'll save that. And I just realized we have not created our database. So let's go do that quickly. So we'll come to localhost 8082 as configured in our Docker container. And then we'll get this admin UI interface. We want to make sure we're connecting to a Postgres QL database. The username will be Postgres. The password will be password. And let's log in. And once we log in, we've got some default databases already created, all of this comes with Postgres anyway, but we just want to create another one. And then we'll call that Dart test. And let's save that. And then now we've got our database. All right, so we'll come back here and we'll test that we're able to connect by doing an await and then con.open. And let's make sure we mark this main function as async so that the await works. To confirm it works, let's print out a message that says connected to Postgres database. And then I am going to close the connection. All right, so let's test this out. So we'll run this by doing dart bin main.dart. Then after a couple of seconds, there we go. We've connected successfully to our database and the connection got closed. So the Postgres package allows us to perform queries on our database by using the query method. And then in here, we'll specify our query as a string. So let's start by creating a table. I'll use a multi-line string so that it's readable. So we'll say create table 
and then the name of our table we'll call customers let's make this capital and then in here we'll define our columns for our table so all this is the usual sql style syntax our first field will be an id and it will be a serial type that means it's auto, auto incrementing this is related to how postgres does it this id will be our primary key and we'll set it as not null secondly we'll specify a name field we specify an email an address and a country so i'll save this and let's run this again okay and let's check our database okay so we've got our customers now created with the settings we specified it's worth mentioning that normally you set up your tables from the from the ui side this bit rather than in your actual application code so this is just for an example so i'll comment this out at this point we're going to perform certain operations in our database so these operations are namely your insert read update delete actually let's make this create your create read update delete but well, you know what i mean so in order to insert data into our database we'll do con.query and then we want to insert into our customers table and then we'll specify the columns address country these values some email address a postal address and then a country and once i save that and run that and go to the ui we've got our entry over here let's try and read that data i'll create a variable called results and then we'll do a query select star from customers and let's print out the results this is what it gives us so it returns a list that contains another list and th this other list is a is essentially our table row so this table row gives us the id the name the email and so on and so forth and it looks like we got two entries because i didn't comment this bit out when i ran it the second time of course if there are no results for instance let's say that is going to give us an empty list okay in fact before we update let's log out the results in a much nicer format so we can say var row in results then we'll print these out i'll use a multi-line string so let's run this again and that should give us a result like that so let's look at how we can make updates to our data it's as simple as making the usual query we'll update customers we will set for instance the country to ghana where the id is one and let's give it a go right and i think that's because we need to put this in double quotes and i think it should be the other way around so that way and then single quotes and there we go so if we go into our ui it's been set to ghana let's see how we can delete data in our database so delete from customers where let's say id is greater than zero so we'll delete everything essentially and if i run that yeah, it should be deleted and let's refresh and they're all gone all right so that's essentially the basics as far as making normal crud operations on a postgres would look like in a dart application all right i've got some more examples i want us to explore so these examples involve using these mock json files that's been added to the project so in order to use those let's import a couple of dart libraries to help us so we'll do dart io and then we'll do dart convert we're going to seed our our database so let's read in our json file specifically our mock customers and this is asynchronous and once we've read that let's decode that string and let's see what that gives us when i run this okay and from here i'm gonna create a stream from our list so we can do stream from itrable and then we'll pass in this mock data which means i can use the await for syntax to loop over each of our items in the json list and then here we'll just do a query and here we want to insert into customers and for our values instead we can do this two different ways so first we can try and use string interpolation so whereby we'll pass in the row and then the key in the item and so on and so forth but i'll use a better approach which is string substitution so it's the at symbol we'll say name we'll have a string substitution for the email then we'll have one for the address and then country these substitutions can be named whatever you want 
And then this query method takes in a second argument, which is a named argument called substitution values. And this takes in a map. And in this map, essentially we'll replace the substitution with your actual values. So for the name substitution, we want from our row, the name key, and I'll just do the same with email address and country. Okay, so what's gonna happen is we're loading in our mock customers.json file, which looks like that. Each item has got name, email address, country, and then we're gonna populate our database. So let's try that. That should be done. Let's go to our UI and there we go. Now this approach does work. And then what we have is each of these calls being made performs a transaction. So that means the operation doesn't fully complete until we see the changes, but then the changes can be seen each time this runs. So there's a secondary approach and that essentially looks, so I'll comment this out and we can do con dot transaction. So it's the transaction method. And then we get a handle to our connection and let's mark this as a sync. And then in here, we'll essentially do this. And what this means is that this operation will be seen as one single transaction rather than multiple ones from this example. So let's, let me clean the database. So we'll delete all of that. So that is empty. And then let's run this. Right, we're going to time out. This is happening because we need to use this connection object. In fact, this is our context. So we want to use this connection context rather than this one. That's how we're getting the timeout. So to confirm it works, let's run it again. And there we go. And when I refresh the UI, we see everything added again. So the next method I want to demonstrate is the mapped results query. So I'll comment this out. So that's another query we can make, which returns the results as a map or the result items as a map. We do con dot mapped results query, and then we'll select star from customers. And I'm going to print that out and let's run this. All right. So this gives us our results essentially as a map object or a list containing map objects rather than list containing lists. The object will have a key name representing the table, the results were pulled from. And of course the value would be the actual item information like that. Now this is useful to have when performing, for instance, a join operation. So to demonstrate that I am going to, I'm going to copy this one, copy that, and then I'll paste and re-enable because what we want to do is we want to load our mock orders.json. And before we adjust this, I'm going to create another table in our database. This table will be called orders. And let's define our columns. Orders will have an ID. It will have a, an order ID. We'll have a customer ID. And then lastly, we'll just have an order date and it will be of type date. So I'll save that. And let me comment this. So if I run that, it should create an orders table for me. Let's go to the UI. And here's our orders table. I'm gonna populate the orders table with the details from our mock orders. And each item here has an order ID essentially, and it's got a customer ID and then an order date. So that's what we're gonna be doing here. So we'll insert into orders and then our columns and we use placeholders for those as well and do that here as well all right so once we've substituted our values i'll comment this out let's run this and let's look in our database then it's been populated okay so what we are going to do with this is that we'll come back to our let me comment this out we'll come back to our mapped results query and we can do something along the lines of that. So let's say we'll select customers dot name. So our table name followed by our table field. And also we want to join that with our orders, order ID from customers. And it's a from with an M 
and we want to do a left join orders and we want to essentially select where the customer id field on the order matches the id of the customer in our customers table and let's order it by the customer's name and i'll just print out the first result just so we see what it looks like and it's customers id okay so when we use mapped results query each of the item looks like that and because we did a join in that map it's got the relevant customer information which links to the relevant order so hopefully that makes some sense now the reason why order id is null is because not all customers are linked to an order so if i lock the whole of results map which actually is what i should have done it looks like all the order ids are null which is because yeah so these are the customer ids let's take a look at our data here all right because the ids have been incrementing because we've been deleting and re and recreating this information of course the id has been incrementing because it's auto increment so let's yeah, let's delete this whole table. And then we'll create the table again. If I come to come over here and let's re-enable this bit. So we'll create our table customers. And then we will populate that table with our mock customer data. That means everything else should fall into place so i'll save this and let's run this again okay so you see some of the customers are linked to an actual order id yeah okay let me comment this out and let's improve the output so we'll say for each row in our results map, we'll print out the customer's name and then we'll print out the order ID. Okay, so if you run this one more time, we get these results. So of course, some customers don't have orders, but some do. All right, so wherever in our orders table, the customer ID can be found, then it'll log, then it'll specify the order ID okay so lastly in fact let's amend our query so that we don't output rows that do not have an associated order and it's as simple as adding a where clause and we'll say orders dot order id for now i'll just do greater than zero because it's an integer and if i run this again that means we return only customers that have an associated order and I'm going to end the tutorial here. I hope it was informative and I hope you at least got a gist of how to talk to a Postgres database from a Dart project. If you enjoyed what was presented, do hit that like button. Also hit the subscribe if you are not a subscriber and hit the bell notification icon next to the subscribe button so that you don't miss out on any future updates. If you've got any questions about this, let me know down in the comments below. Speak to you soon. Thank you.